Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. We're going to be finishing up the page I'm working on in the Fragile World by Kirby Rosans. And yesterday we did the one little guy here and then I finished the other part of his family here. <laughs> We're going to be doing the background, the rocks, the little plants around here and then there's a tiny bit of sky up here so <laughs> we'll finish that up that'll be easy and I'm really trying to figure out if that is a tree or another rock but I think it's a rock um, when I looked up where these little critters um, live it's kind of like uh, well they burrow underground so this is all dirt and rocks with some foliage around them but um, the areas that they live they are more flat surfaced no um, trees around that I can tell but rocks yes so we're gonna make that a rock this is a tree branch or a branch of some kind of brush I'm gonna say the colors um, I'm going to use, I'm going to do the rocks, try to make it a little easier for me, in the pumice stone, which is actually a great color for their environment. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So we will be inking up the um, rock area with this color. I will go in with pencils after that. Now if you want, you could find... Um, like a acrylic paint that is a very, uh, what do we call this, beige white tone. You could probably mix a brown and a white to get a beige. And then just do a wash over the rocks too, or you can time consumingly color the rocks. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> not when I have my ink, and I love my ink, so here we go. I'm just going to get the, um, ink all over this nice little pad here. We're going to make sure that it is worked in. So we're going to take some time to do this. While we do this, I'll tell you why I do that. I want the whole pad to look similar to this one. You can tell this pad has been uh, around in the black soot for a long time. The ink is brought down almost all the way down. This is just a little quarter here. When I do that, I can use the pad and it doesn't give me a ring around there because the pressure of or the ink inside the um, gushy sponge here is put in in a great layer and there's no just rim around the edge. So I want to make sure it's totally lay, uh, inked up. I have a lot of rocks here. So you just keep working it into the pad, give it a couple of good smushes, but you don't want it just on the edge. So even if you just took it and wiped it off the edges and then ran it, it would come out better. So that's the color of their rocks. I'm going to use it a little lighter than that. But I'm just going to, let's see, we'll start over on this side of the page and add some of that in. Okay, go down in between them. It's okay if we touch a little of this grass because when I was looking at pictures, the grass isn't exactly green. It's kind of, well, to go with their habitat. They're supposed to be blending into this, so their habitat is more of a dry, arid area. We'll have some green in the grass, but it'll be mostly a browner type. So we'll just keep going up here. Use the, uh, 
if you want to make a crease use that edge to go down like these little lines here where we have shadows and then just bring the ink out to the other places you know how much I love to play with my ink and rocks are not you know uniform they have divots they have some round or soft surfaces but most of them have got you know divots dents and such so I'll we'll put a little of that down here too This will also dry lighter than I am putting it down. Ink does that. Okay, other side of the page. Yee. We'll go over that stick too. on that rug. Okay. And then we got kind of a base coat going on there. I'm going to bring in a little bit of gathered twigs. I'm going to use the same uh, ink pad here and I'm only going to ink up the corner. And you'll tell the difference here. I'm going to use that line to go on some of these shadowed areas and behind the little guys themselves. We have to darken up some of this. So we just bring in some just using that little corner there and drawing basically with that very big felt tool. How's that? <laughs> Think of it as a giant sharpie or something. Just drawing it across those lines. just over here and there. I don't know if you can see the other side of the paper.
go around there when you're going up those little corners. Curve it down when you're doing downward strokes. up here. Didn't see that one. bring in another little bit of brown vintage photo still bring in just a touch of black that's uh, black soot and where we are is in a hole here so we want to darken that and that's a nice easy way of doing that we have a hole over here we just darken the area bring that out a little bit just a nice heavy shadow there and you can bring some of that into the rocks down here. Up here, I don't know how far up here we can see. Remember, we're going to touch all this up with pencil, so it does not have to be perfect. In fact, it's really not perfect at all, but it's ink. And we're just getting ourselves a nice little base to do everything else on. go all right quit playing with that <laughs> let's get these put someplace else We can use some of the colors that we used on the little guys over here. We find something here that will work here. Let's go with sandstone. 
and we'll work around this little guy here and add some of this into the shadows this is probably a little too bright I'm gonna need a darker darker planer <laughs> when you're black you're not gonna work yeah here we go with this one this one is sepia red. Just add a couple bits of this in here. So we're just choosing where our darkest shadows are. I need to get a different color. More of a dull brown. Maybe. Let's see. It's going to be dark enough. But not uh, too dark. This is Van Dyke Brown. So we'll see how that works. Yeah, that'll work nice. Okay, under this grass piece, it's going to be a little shadowed. Underneath where he's got all his little shadow lines for us, we're going to deepen those. This is going to be a, a lot of work here. <laughs> so I'm going to do one section and then finish the rest off camera, but we'll get at least one section done. You want to darken it down underneath because this, he is coming out of a hole. So we want to make sure that looks like a hole. So you want to darken that, reset it back into the wall there. So this one might not have much color on it, as in the light tones, but it'll have a bit, especially around that side where it could be out underneath this area. Okay, same on this side. This is a four rock. He's actually behind this rock. 
I'm going to feed her out here. So he's shadowing this rock. And bring in some black here too. We're going to really darken this one up. This one up over here too. And get it nice and dark in here. And going up a little bit. Just want to make sure. It looks like he's in his little hole. Okay, back in with the Van Dyke Brown. Go over that black. Okay, <laughs> like I said, this is going to take a while. <laughs> Go back on this side and put some of that on there too. Just follow the lines that he gave us. Get them nice and colored in. Each one is going to be a different shadow. Leave some spaces light color because we're going to go over it with a lighter brown. Make sure you go around your little grass blades because they're going to be in front of the rock and you want a shadow behind them. And anytime to Piles meet, you want to darken underneath that. Okay, let's bring in our lighter color. This is going to be champagne. Just want to kind of go down that a little bit. That'll give us our nice light rock up the top. And our highlights in here. back in with your Van Dyke and just touch it so it blends in a little better there. Okay, 
Then you can take in a dark brown. I thought I had a dark brown out here. Oh no, chestnut. I think that's going to be too red. Yep, so we'll put a little in there. Just in the darkest spots. I need like a walnut brown. I think I have a walnut brown out. Different brand of pencil, but let's see. Well, I have a dark sepia. Dark sepia. This is a polychrome. That'll work. Between the little blades of grass here. Sorry about that. Let's darken it up here. It kind of looks like I went over this with a pencil and that ink didn't quite catch it. So we're going to do that with the pencil. Some dark under there. <clears throat> we'll go on this side and do the same thing. Probably get that all the way down in there.
The wind's kicking up outside. That one's an interesting noise. Okay, anywhere where it's nice and dark, you want to make it nice and darker. Okay, I'm going to turn the book a little bit. And we're going to go this way. Save my wrist a little. Okay, we're just going to keep doing this, darkest in the dark areas, nice and dark back there. through there a little bit. This is not exactly the woohoo party time watching a bunch of little shadows. <laughs> but you can tell what it's doing to the rocks. We're making them look like rocks and dirt. These little guys are in their little burrow, so I must darken that quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to turn this again. I think I'll do the rocks in the poly since I have them all out on my desk and I'll save you Uh, will save you and save me the time of looking for the colors in the other set. Okay, we we're up here. Oh, my kitty just decided to come in and touch me with the coldest paw. <laughs> Where have you been, kitty? It is cold.
side we have? Are we over here? This side here to do. Okay, I can get the book down a little bit. Whoops. Yeah, okay, we're gonna bring in, what do we have here? I got three other polys. So we have a lighter color, a medium color, and a uh, darker color. So I'll be going in between raw umber, the Van Dyke Brown, which I already used in the Light Fast, and this one is a um, gold green. So we're gonna add a few of these. I'm gonna start off with the uh, raw umber in some of this area. And we're gonna brighten a few of these tops of the rocks with that. the little veins that were down in here. We're going to brighten them up. Bring the color in. Now these rocks are out farther, so we want to make sure that these up here stay a little lighter. I can't turn it this way. Sorry, I'm turning the book, but...
get a better angle in there. So far, <laughs> I'm just going to kind of do this area here. We're going to bring in the, um, what was I just using? A little bit of the green gold. And yeah, sorry, I'm going to have to move the book around. So this is just a little brighter. It'll help bring in some green tones to our grass, too. So we're just going to hit this in the areas that I didn't color with the other one. But I'll blend it in just here and there. side. I have a flat edge here. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, now what we're going to do is take a warm gray. And just kind of go over some areas to knock down the brightness a little bit. but let it still shine through. That's why we're doing that very lightly.
And that is how we're going to get it to all look like that. So while we're in this section, we got to do some of the grass. So the grass is kind of um, not bright green grass. <laughs> so we'll do one here. This is seaweed. Kind of gives us our green brown look. And we will add a little bit of oh, what do we have? Olive earth. Will that green it up a little bit more? No. I don't want it to green now. Let's see about that one. Mm, we'll go with that one. Olive Earth, or is that seaweed there? We'll go with that. And then we'll bring in just a light touch of a green here. Um, this is May Green. So that's how we're going to do the grass. So we have seaweed, ivy, and may green. We'll throw a little of that in here. We'll just do a couple of these. That's supposed to be more like a tumble dried grass out here. That's why I didn't mind if I threw in some of the brown tones because it's not supposed to be terribly bright. Okay, then we're going to go over the same ones I just did with the seaweed. Throw it in a few spaces. And then bring the ivy in. Do a couple more of those. So just lay a coat down of the May green. Let's see, there's got to be a funky one around here somewhere. <laughs> um, this little guy up here is pretty big. I think that's part of a rock. That might be part of the leaf. Okay, we'll make it part of the leaf. Bring in the ivy.
I don't have my seaweed. You can go back over it and get some a little brighter if you want. Just blend it more. Where's the other one I did? my fingers. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so we did a bigger one. There are a couple of those on the other side. And then the rocks are just going to be done like that. I might bring in a little champagne in here again and go over the top of those. Make sure we get some cream in it. So what I'm going to do is just do the rest of the rocks off camera. Um, the tree branch is just going to be a brown branch. Well, this is raw umber. All I'm doing here is in the darker areas putting more pressure on it to get a darker color. In lighter areas just releasing the pressure and doing it lightly to blend the color out. Don't know how much detail I want to put into this one. It's a dead branch. <laughs> but we'll make sure it's brown. Just a tiny bit of um, the Van Dyke brown here. Darken up those dark spots a little bit more.
There we go. Tree branch. And then just work on our greenery a little more here. Yep, sorry. <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing this off camera. <clears throat> um, yeah. Maybe I'll do this funky rock up here at the top. So I'm going to turn the book around. Going in with the um, Van Dyke. Probably bring in the... Uh, sepia in here. You can see that, right? Just going dark where we've got the dark lines. And blending it out a little bit. Next color is the raw umber. If you want, you could always bring back in your uh, inking too, if you're inking. If you're not, you don't have to. <laughs> right on the edge of that book is really hard to get with pencil. So I just brought in a little ink there. Okay, we're going to get the sepia we had. And get it nice and dark down in here. just kind of bring a, a line of it down across there and lightly bring it up so 
sorry. Do you want to get it reset behind the uh, other rocks? Reset. It's recessed. <laughs> sorry. Sometimes when I'm coloring, I forget half of what I'm supposed to talk about or half about what I'm supposed to say or how to say words. I get into a zone. Okay, so if we turn that around, you can see the rocks. <laughs> and then we'll just put a little of the champagne in on the lighter portions. And there we go. So basically, that is what I'm going to do with the rest of the rocks off camera, and I will color in the bushes or grasses that look like this. We have one lonely guy over there. One lonely guy over here. <laughs> That's the only one of that kind of grass, which is going to start off with a little silver tone to it. We're going in with some fossil gray. It's the only one, so hmm. it will go in with a little bit of the ivory, very lightly. And then a tiny bit of the seaweed to dark on the bottom. And again, we're using that lightly. Go back in with a little bit of the um, gray. And bring it off the page. There. It's not a very green bush, that one. It's kind of a gray, silver, fuzzy thing. But we only have one of those, so we don't have to worry about it too much. We got one up there. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'll just um, stop the camera, and then I will finish all the rocks and the greenery, and then I will show you. Oh, brown! Oh, we got to do the blue sky. <sighs> That's just going to be inked. Um. Let's see. Do I have an ink out here that doesn't have any color on it? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Oops. Let's see. Yeah, that'll be a good color. We can do it right in here. 
so we're just going to add in a blue sky. There's going to be a soft sky up there. There's a little bit of it over here and a little bit of it over here. I prefer to do that when I'm done with everything else, but might throw some other shades in there depending but that's basically how that's gonna look all right so I'm gonna stop the camera and I'm gonna finish the rocks and uh, I'll come back and show you what it looks like see you in a while okay guys we're back and I got most of the rocks done and what I'm gonna do around the edges so I'm gonna go over it with some distress ink so we have a piece of paper back here. We actually should do it on this one. <laughs> and I'm going to put it like this on there. Can we see this part? Okay, I have um, vintage photo and walnut stain along with the blue. I think I need to get that blue just a little bit more up there. So we're going to work on that first by just taking the blue, getting it on one portion there and just kind of dragging it across in a line and going off the paper. A line is going to give you kind of a look of a cloud area up there. Okay, I have to do that on the other side, but we have to wait till we get to the other side. Then we're going to take the um, vintage photo first and we're going to get that on this. Vintage photo is a redder color and a lighter color than this. And we're just going to kind of go around the edge up here with that. So what we're tending to do is getting an, a, a little circle, half moon on this, and getting that corner nice and dark. Okay. Then you want to just blend it a little bit. So we have a nice dark corner up here. I'm going to take the paper and I'm going to turn it around and we're going to do the same thing along the bottom so I know I have to get the book up a little higher <laughs> so we're just going to bring the page down here we're going to get a lot of ink on there and we're just going to come down and ink that we're going to go over all the rocks all the greenery everything okay so we get our half moon here and we'll go across the bottom of the page over to the corner. Bring that kind of up into the page a little bit. Okay. See how that gives us a really nice outline. Um, you can tell the difference between the two. If I hold this here we got the nice dark top, nice dark bottom, and then when you go over here you have kind of this dark look over on this side. We're just going to flip the paper over to this side and do the same thing. I'm going to bring it across the bottom of the page. Get the corner first. Darken it up and then just go across the bottom of the page here. Gonna go up a little bit, with a little bit of darkness up here. Yeah, I'll try not to get the other page. Up on the side. And then we'll pull it down. We're even going to put some up here on this corner. 
in our blue area. And take our blue back out. Get a line that goes across to resemble lines in the sky. Boom. Okay, then we get our brown up here. And if there's any place you want to bring it down, bring it down. It's kind of on the underside of all the animals. I could bring it over here and do it right across here. That's just going to darken that area up and even make it look like it's set back even further. Okay. Try to get a little bit of that in the center of the book. Take out that white a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to take the walnut and we're going to darken these two bottom corners and that top corner. We're not going to touch that one because this is going to get really dark and I would prefer it to look a little bluer up there. So just bring it down. I don't know if you can see that. Bring it down into the corner. Bring it across. Darken up some areas if you want. Again, just bring that walnut in there. We're trying to uh, make the animals because they're in their habitat. I want them to stand out, but I also want them to semi-blend in. <laughs> So we're darkening the corners, darkening the bottom, and putting a little of this color in every now and then, just to make sure that we all look like we're supposed to be here, living in our natural habitat. Okay, just up there. Darken anywhere you want. on the grasses if you want to put a little more brown on those. Okay. That one done. And that is basically how it's going to be done. I'm going to bring a little white in on our blue. So I'm going to turn the book upside down. So sorry. <laughs> but it's a double page spread and it's kind of big. We're just going to pull a little white in here. And get it look more like a sky. Kind of keeping it, uh, how do you say, straight line. <laughs> This is a white uh, Holbein, I believe. No? Yep. It was on my desk. <laughs> so let's get that a little better. Okay, and then here. Just a little bit of something there, too. And kind of Blend it down and get it out of the uh, the ink. Moved out of the plant a little bit. Okay. There we go. Now, if you want these little grassy areas to be a little greener, you could always throw in extra green. I kind of like them in the brown tones. So our little guys look like they're where they're supposed to be. I think we're done. I'm going to put a little white around these guys' noses up here. Just to brighten that up a little bit. But, I am done. I think it turned out really cute. If you want to highlight any more of these rocks, 
just take your eraser and you can edge out some of the color that you put in there. It will even take out some of the distress ink if you didn't like how it turned out. As long as you do it while it's a little wet or damp or as if you put a little bit of pencil on there, it'll take the pencil out. So like on this rock, if you want it just a whiter tip, just erase a little bit. If you want to add some accents, pull out some of that color on some of those. And it just adds a little more interest to there. So any rocks that you want to brighten up, you just go around and do that. Um, <laughs> it's a detail you don't have to do if you don't want to. It just adds a little something to it. Which is kind of cool. It's always fun to add little tiny details. If you want the little rocks to show a little better under the um, darker area, you can just run your eraser on those also. And tip them off. But other than that, I have a bush that I missed. Find the green pencils. Where are the green pencils? Literally, they were just on my desk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where are they? I gotta color a bush. That's the May. Ivy. Seaweed. There we go. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Well, we got this side over here, and we got these little guys over here. And I, like I said, I'll take a picture and put it at the end of the video so you can see it a little better. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in another video. They're so cute. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye now.